Hey everybody and welcome back. So today I'm gonna tell you about a vlog I did and in this vlog I read Rock Paper Scissors by Alice Feeney. I don't know if you've seen or perused my comments section as of late. Every time I mention that I haven't read that book in a video, people are like, read Rock Paper Scissors now! This is a recurring theme in many videos, so people really want me to read Rock Paper Scissors. So I was just like, okay, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it for you. And since this book's been out for a long time, I figured that I would just do a spoiler vlog. Honestly, make my life easier. Talking about a plot that I can't spoil and trying so hard, walking on eggshells as to not ruin the experience for other people is agonizing. So yeah, spoilers galore. Lots of predictions, some inappropriate comments. Either that's the case or, or she tracked this old guy down put some red lipstick on, made him chug Viagra, and shoved a fist up his ass. This vlog is a general mess. I didn't even record footage of myself reading it because I was listening to the audiobook. So I don't know what this is gonna look like. It's a disaster, a dumpster fire, a video I literally out because it was demanded of me. A video that I literally just have no hope in that I might end up deleting, but either way. But for now, enjoy or don't, I don't care. Here's the vlog, okay, peace. <clears throat> hey everyone, um, hi. So, hair, mess, life, mess. General concept of existence and meaning and being in this world, mess. Internal state, dead as this leaf. Yes, I have props for this video because I'm a professional, damn it. So while that crow is shrieking up there and ruining my shot, I am going to tell you about what I am doing today for you, my viewers, my lovely people who have been requesting this non-stop, okay? I have been asked ad nauseum in chats on my live show, in comment sections when I have alluded to this book, in I think the wrap-up when I talked about His and Hers by Alice Feeney. I have been asked when am I gonna read Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney and I, I think I'm gonna just do that today. It's a 10-hour audiobook and I already read the first two hours-ish when I was on a live show with Katie and Chandler. I'm 7% into Rock, Paper, Scissors because I just started it because I DNF'd the other one because the chapter was getting really boring. Yeah, McKay out here spreading his gossip. Okay. I don't believe you. <gasps> Who's ready? Oh no. Oh wait, let me make, let me make the screen bigger. Gotta be the rectangle. Oh no. Oh, oh no. my god. This is short and scary. Oh, and... <laughs> I can't even, I don't want to hold that up anymore. <laughs> it was a fun time. Um, the book started, certainly started off with promise. And by promise, I mean, no matter how f and bad your book is going to be, if it is a thriller with the trope main couple secretly hates each other i will likely give you a four star at least okay so yeah today i am out here and i'm gonna read rock paper scissors by alice feeney i have decided to film my live reaction to this book i have done videos of this sort in the past see ice planet barbarians yeah that happened <laughs> except unlike then i am not on zero hours of sleep so my thought process will likely be um Improved, I hope, I sincerely hope, we shall see. But yeah, we're gonna do this, we're gonna actually do this, and we're gonna do this. Am I simply trying to distract myself from having to wait for the season finale of Euphoria to come out by doing this thing? Yeah, yes, <laughs> pretty much sums it all up. Will this be a fun time? I don't know. Here is the book, okay? Here is the piece of literature that we will be consuming today. Might get the audiobook to spice things up. We'll see, we'll see, okay? We can do anything. All right, anything's possible in this life, in this world. So I'm gonna tell you about what I have read so far. We follow this woman named Amelia, and she's got this husband named Adam, and he has this condition where he can't see people's faces. Sort of like that movie Faces in the Crowd with Mila Jovovich. If you haven't seen that film, neither have I. So they've got this condition, and I think their relationship is rather fraught. Um, they have shit going on, a bit of trouble in paradise kind of situation over here. A lot of sketchy stuff between them in this relationship. And so they're going on vacation in Scotland because Amelia had won this raffle at work and she got to stay in this church in the middle of nowhere in the snow. That sounds terrible, frankly. That doesn't sound like a ideal vacation that would bring a couple together at all. But what do I know? I don't know what it's like to be in a healthy relationship. Um, 
I wonder what that's like. Probably not gonna find out in this book, but we shall see. Yeah, so they get to the church, their dog is getting paranoid, their dog is barking, their dog is growling, something is amiss. We get flashbacks about how they met, she's a huge fan of dogs, she works in this dog shelter. Meanwhile, Adam is this aspiring screenwriter, he's this writer, he's having trouble making it in the business. Did this couple have like a single conversation before ending up together because literally I'm having trouble seeing how these people have each other's best interest in mind or share the same values. I don't know if they have anything in common to be frank with you. So them being together is pretty weird. I'm gonna update you soon. Thank you for being here. Assuming you are still watching and have not gotten fed up with my face, voice, and personality. Um, yeah, I'm gonna continue reading and I will spoil the shite out of this book and chat with you soon. Two seconds later. All right, so you know how it's how <sighs> words. What are words? <laughs> you know how I told you guys that he was an alcoholic. No, I didn't tell you that. I'm telling you now. He's an alcoholic. In addition to having that condition, where he, in addition to having that condition, what the scrap all that? <laughs> okay, clearly I have failed to produce words to be coherent. So let me just say this. I told you guys that he had this condition that rendered him unable to distinguish one face from another, unable to see faces, yada yada yada. So in addition to that, he apparently likes to hit the bottle, you know, the grape, the wine, the vino, the reds, the whites, the rosés, he is a wine person. So in addition to having that condition, he's a drunk. <laughs> that in itself is like Alice Feeney is promising us, an unreliable narrator, and an ass pull, an ass pull of a plot twist, okay? But then now I'm like second guessing myself because it's too obvious. She's gonna make us think that he is the unreliable narrator, but then it might be the woman, but I don't, I don't know what's going on. I'm really scared that this is gonna be a ridiculously elaborate setup for a very simple solution. Every single thriller with a pretty cover, a book of the month pick, they always have the same third act. Also to spice up the life, I got the audiobook and it's Fucking British as fuck. It is super British. Okay, cheers. Would it be healthy if I formed an emotional attachment to this giant ant that has um, placed itself on my person? It could bite me and leave a huge sting, but that's like a metaphor for my love life, you know? Unhealthy attachments. Story of my fucking life. Okay, update. So we learned that Adam looked up to this author, this man named Henry Winters, and Henry Winters' his, uh, publicist or agent died. And then Amelia was like, you know what? The gatekeepers are dead. I know this guy has had this reputation of not letting any of his books become adapted to film, but you're a screenwriter. The gatekeeper is down. Go in for the kill. He goes in for the kill. You know, he gets the job. He is gonna be writing the screenplay for a film adaptation for Henry Winters' movie. And then we get another flashback where Amelia is like, I did something to aid this decision. And it's like, oh my gosh. Henry Winters is like an old fucking dinosaur. So either the plot twist is that she, um, is that she's either like his long lost um, daughter, her father wasn't her biological father, and her mom was sleeping around like a hoe, and <laughs> Henry Winters was, is her biological father, and she bribed him to give her husband the gig, you know, and she threatened to ruin his reputation, like, you know, I'm gonna expose you for being a man hoe if you don't give my husband the gig. Just say yes, it's a fucking movie, you get the royalties, you little old fuck. Yeah, no respect for the elderly in this, uh, book. Anyway. She didn't say that, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Either that's the case, or, or, she tracked this old guy down, put some red lipstick on, made him chug Viagra, and shoved a fist up his ass, and hopped on that, and hopped on that dick. I am literally in public. That's my prediction now. Either she threatened, or she smashed. Chat soon. All right, time for another update. Um, I got the audiobook, okay. So with the audiobook, I have access to Amelia's um, emotions. The person who narrated Amelia's um, point of view is so good at, you know, conveying Amelia's inner anguish, inner turmoil, inner emotions, inner state of being. It's like, yes, show me how sad you are. Show me what a fucking failure your relationship is. This is amazing. 
I love it. It's so good. Richard Armitage, I think, is doing the guy voice. He's the actual actor in this. Like, he's someone I've seen in movies, but he's not delivering. He's not giving me the pain the way whoever is narrating Amelia is giving me the pain. Also, I really hate his voice. Um, it's nice when you hear him in the movies, but in the audiobooks times two speed, I can't do it with that accent. I can't listen to that accent in the speed I would like to listen to it in. The woman, however, three times, crisp. Plus 10 for her, minus 10 for him. That's just how it is. And I'm highlighting this point because in the scene where Amelia was getting wine in the cellar and the trap door slammed and the lights went off and there was scratching and there was her voice being heard in her ear, bitch, that narrator made that scene so intense that I got the chills, the goosebumps, the vibes. I'm enjoying this experience so far as a person, as a reader, as a human, yeah. Update soon. Later that day. The scene where she sees a face in the window scared me. Okay, hi, I'm over focused because I'm on my walk. I am strolling, I am taking a stroll through nature, through plants, gonna go for a run, maybe work out later or something. We'll see how that goes. But I'm gonna take a seat over here right now. Right here, right now. I forgot everything I was gonna say. Oh, okay, so here's the thing. Um Amelia implied that only one of them could make it out alive and then we just got to a scene where she apparently had made him sign life insurance when he was drunk So it's like is she planning to kill him? But then the husband also seems to be onto her like when we get to his perspective It's like he's on to her plan to take him out and it's implied that he has been to that church before Because she he, he finds a dustpan somewhere without her telling him where it is also, that church is fucking creepy. The bedroom in that church looks exactly like the bedroom in their house. What is going on in this book? The one time I hated a book that had all the tropes I love in it is Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough because that ending was an ass pull like no other. It made no sense. I hated it. It was just, it felt like such a cheap, cheap cop out. Not my thing, not what I'm looking for. And Sarah Pinborough is the um, main, she gave the endorsement on the cover of this book. So I'm nervous. The queen of ass pulling endings endorses this novel. I am nervous. Yes, I am, but I'm intrigued. All right, so I've just completely switched to the audiobook because I'm enjoying just, you know, staring at the nature, staring at the plants. It's a really beautiful day today. So we just got to this part where Adam apparently has these dreams of a car running over this woman in a red kimono. And then we get to Amelia's point of view and she reveals that this woman in a red kimono was his mom who would put on this red kimono when she slept with many men. So apparently his mom was, I guess, I guess a serial cheater. Did the mom sleep with a man connected to Amelia's past? Okay. Did the mom sleep with her dad? And did the dad get so depressed that he deliberately crashed the car to try to kill himself and his wife? Is Amelia the um, biological daughter of Adam's mom? And is the plot twist insane? <laughs> Like, is she the biological daughter of the mom because the, her dad was cheating with Adam's mom because Adam's mom, during her red kimono days, slept with her dad and she's trying to get revenge and she's taking him to this church to reveal this in case he goes wild in their flat or in their new house? I better be super off. I better be super wrong, okay? Ignore the crow. Chat soon. Two seconds later. Robin. What's the deal with this bitch, huh? The fuck's up with Robin? Who, what is her deal? She's this woman who is like a prepper um, with baby food squatting in some place near the church. She knows about Adam's past. Saw him when she was a kid. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. I think I know what's going on. I have a wild prediction for a plot twist that I think is gonna occur. So you know how we've been reading so many sections where she reads out loud from her diary, from various diary entries that she's written? I feel like the person we are reading from is not Amelia. Maybe the real Amelia is dead and this person stole the diary letters and is pretending to be Amelia from those diary letters. That's what I think is happening. That we are not reading from the point of view of Amelia. Maybe Robin is the real Amelia. Are Robin and Amelia like teaming up to fuck Adam over? Like have they 
concocted this method to like take him out and use the life insurance and is someone posing as Amelia? Is this like a strangers on a train thing where someone agreed to kill Adam and Amelia gave her the diary notes? Is, th is that what's up? Is that what's up? I'm only like 30% in, so if I predict this this early on, oh boy. I think I got it right because Robin was buying baby food, so I think that Robin is the real wife and she's pregnant because now we got to a scene with like IVF and shit, so I think she maybe had the kid and Robin is buying baby food to hide out in this random place while Amelia, the, the fake wife, is like posing as the wife and Adam is not with his wife but he's with some other bitch and they're planning something to planning to take him out oh my gosh later that day all right hi i don't know how much i can film out here before people start talking because i've been hearing conversations from that house and that house but i'm gonna just pop in because i have a new theory i've got a new working theory so just hear me out all right so my new working theory is is that this robin chick is somehow related to this october woman so basically, um, this woman named October is this famous actress that was recently found dead and she was supposed to star in the TV adaptation of Rock, Paper, Scissors, the big break screenplay of Adam. And I've come to this conclusion because this woman, this Robin woman, apparently has knows the ins and outs of the church. She was apparently the one who invited them to this church through a raffle or something. She knows about the screenplay Rock, Paper, Scissors because she was like doing hand signals. She swears that these people are bad people. Adam was the last person to see October alive. So I suspect that maybe Adam was responsible for the death of October and this Robin woman is trying to get revenge and kill them. But then that's a bit too obvious. But then Robin also knows about the red kimono and his mom and his past. Is she trying to build up this nightmare scenario where she scares the shit out of him then kills him or uses his guilt? I don't know. So I think this Robin woman is maybe the girlfriend of October who's trying to get revenge on October by killing these people and framing someone for someone's murder. Because Rock, Paper, Scissors was the script October was gonna be in, and Robin swears that they're bad people, and Robin breaks in and steals the inhaler and the, the sleeping pills, so it's like, sketchy, sketchy stuff. Also, Robin like kidnapped their dog for some reason, so I don't know. I'll try to finish this either today or tomorrow, but updates soon. 2,000 years later. Okay, all right. Um, hi, what is going on, guys? What's up? So, I haven't finished the, the book yet. What's going on? Um, I am a mess. If you're wondering why I look like a mess, it's because I am one. I am gonna read the rest of this book on this iPad because there have been so many quotes about relationships being shitty and they inspire me because they're true. Okay, we all can't be like those two birds up on that branch that are probably gonna make some babies later. <laughs> Last we left off, Robin was being sketchy. Um, we were getting flashbacks to Robin. Apparently, I, I suppose being either the daughter or the niece of Henry Winter, she is related to him somehow. Could she be a love child with another woman? Could she be his much younger wife? Who knows, right? These things are unpredictable. These things come out of nowhere. Yeah, if I were to guess, Robin is the daughter of Henry Winter and the death of him was somehow related to our main couple and she's getting revenge. We'll see what happens. All right, I'm gonna start the audiobook and read this book right now. Let's do this. <laughs> okay. 2,000 years later. Bitch. She was the wife? The fucking wife? This whole time she was the fucking wife? Wow. I can't believe this book had the audacity to hint that one of these young women <laughs> fucked that old dinosaur author who wrote 50 books in 50 years. That's just something you don't do, okay? I, okay, look, I mean, no shame if that's your thing, but like, not my thing. This would make a really fucking entertaining movie, just saying. Okay, I think I half guessed the twist. So in the scene, in the actual scene, when Amelia is showing Adam the, the photos and then she's like, 
Henry Winter was the father of your first wife. I was just like, this is so stupid. You're throwing in some random wife that we didn't know of before. But then that tied in to the story beforehand when his wife, who I assumed the whole time was Amelia, caught him cheating and then ripped up that tree and threw it on the bed. No, his first wife was Robin. She was his first wife. She was the first one. He was number one. It was her who was writing the diary entries the whole fucking time. Bitch. Okay, okay. And the dog, B Bob, was her dog. She left the dog. What a bitch. Oh my goodness. Y'all, guys, family, friends. Okay, the family, don't watch this. Everybody else, though. Um, this book has literally all the tropes I love in thrillers. It's got the couple that secretly hates each other. It's got the crazy bitch. And it's got the revenge on a cheater. Because, you know, as someone who has been the victim of that shit, whenever someone understands that people need to be punished, but, like, you can't punish them because the law in real life. So when they get fucking punished in books... Okay. Yes. <laughs> This is some actual Gone Girl shit, like with the extent that this crazy bitch is going to, this wronged woman, victim of infidelity, the extent that she takes to get back at slash with her husband and torment him, lock him in as a prisoner, is beautiful. <laughs> I really enjoyed this. I mean, I do agree with Katie that this was maybe not the most logical thriller, maybe requires, no, definitely requires a tremendous suspension of disbelief, but I had so much fun. I was like imagining like super famous actors that people take seriously, Charlotte Gainsbourg, Richard Armitage, doing the shit in this book, and it was glorious, okay? The movie I made in my head was glorious, it was entertaining. I think I liked it a bit more than his and hers. Maybe they're on the same level. I need to head back inside, maybe start editing this vlog. This was fun, okay. I had a good time. If any of you made it to the end and would like me to react this way to any other book, um, comment down below your suggestions, what's up? Like, comment, subscribe, share this video with people who like this book and let them know that I exist. Okay, all right, anyway, thanks. I hope to see you in future videos, and as always, take care.